It's time for Inside the MFL, the official sports talk radio show of the Minor Football League. It's football, baby! Football fans, this show is for you, as the show brings you the most up-to-date information from the league's franchises across the country. Let's get it going now! It's time to get Inside the MFL with your hosts, Dr. Richard Miles Sr. and Kelsey Nicole Nelson. Hello, everyone, and welcome into another edition of Inside the MFL, your official sports talk radio show of the one and only the Minor Football League headquartered in our beautiful nation's capital of Washington, D.C., under the great leadership of our mayor, Ms. Mario Bowser. And look, the Minor Football League is the nation's only professional developmental football league that you'll find in the entire country, boosting 16 franchises here in America, as well as 16 franchises in Africa. And with Africa, let me kick it off to our host, none other than Dr. Richard D. Miles Sr., who is also the CEO, chairman, and founder of the Minor Football League. Dr. Miles, how are you today? I'm feeling good this Saturday morning. We got a lot we're going to do. We got to get ready to go out here to the, the Maryland Crabs. Um, uh, yeah, uh, the Maryland season. Blue Crabs this afternoon. Uh, so we got to be absolutely. in and out of the radio station, Dr. Miles. I-10 by 10. Absolutely. Also, we want to say, Congratulations, Dr. Charles Oliver. That's where I was going to go, job. talking about uh, Africa. Yeah, Tell I mean, everybody about that event that yeah, we attended. Well, I believe that since you was hosting everything. No, you helped to plan the event. The You're on the Absolutely. board and everything. We was excited about that. that uh, we finally had the opportunity to uh, uh, welcome the U.S. Ambassador for the African Union here yes. to America. And as you know, it's COVID. Uh, we had COVID here. But we hadn't had a chance to uh, celebrate her the way that we uh, we sh- uh, could, and we you know we had an opportunity to do that uh, last week. But I'm excited about that, and I'm excited about going to Africa. I'm excited about the 16 franchises that we put in there, and not only that. I mean, we had everybody there, all the dignitaries, uh, everybody all the, who's the anybody, all the all the different uh, uh, ambassadors came there, the different generals, different VIPs there. I'm just sad that I didn't win that 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 door prize. You know, oh my gosh! $1. Two round trip tickets to Ethiopia that were worth five thousand dollars. I think all of us wanted to win that. I, I think some people might have put their business cards in the raffle twice, Doctor Miles. I should have put mine in five times. Unfortunately, <laughs> I didn't have any. But you know, I just want to shout to. Uh, Dr. Alawale. Yes, Dr. Charles Alawale, who also serves as our commissioner to Africa on the MFL board. Truly a wonderful event at his brand new house in Upper Marlboro, Maryland, Prince George's County, or Pretty Girl County, as some like to call it, Dr. Miles, but a wonderful, wonderful event. Absolutely. And we're getting a lot of calls from young players now, and I think they realize that the MFL is the laboratory of change and uh, give them an opportunity to uh, play uh, we getting ready for 2022. I'm excited about that. But just, you know, all in all, everything that the MFL is doing is, uh, it, I mean, we just got to say kudos for the coaches, the new GMs that we talked to. And we're we going to be, this year, we're definitely going to have entertainment for halftime. But we will bring him on uh, later in, uh, on one of the shows. And we got some uh, great young interns. We'll be announcing him. Also, we got, we're going to already announce our, uh, our new board members that was there with Obama uh, when he yes. was president. And we so we talked about, about him that. on this show, so it was great to be able to have him <laughs> there at the event in person. Like you said, it was a star-studded event because everybody was there, but also in a safe manner. Very important to recognize, as we know, we are still in the midst of a global pandemic. And to that point, I just have to hammer home, please. Together, we can fight COVID-19. I understand some people are saying they have to do their research, but look, the research is out there. The scientists have proven it. And again, we just want to advance. The same reason why if you decide to have a child, your child will get stuck with different things. <laughs> and I mean, when I say stuck with, I mean different uh, chicken pox and everything else, the measles, the mumps and everything else that used to people have to struggle to to now hopefully children not having to go through. I think it was something like polio, you know, and thank gosh, now that's something that children, Dr. Miles, don't have to worry about and go through. But again, we just want a safer world. But Dr. Charles Alawali of Nigerian descent, Nigeria represented. And how perfect was it that it was also on Nigeria's Independence Day out of it, Absolutely. Dr. Miles? We couldn't say enough, that, uh, enough about that. And all the different sponsors that came, I mean, uh, we want to also thank... Uh, Aisha Brayboard, she was the uh, 
state's attorney for Prince George's County. You know, we had some people in the house. You know, a lot of great people. people. And again, just a wonderful event. We'll be dropping the interview soon. Dr. Miles, I saw you over there getting interviewed on the red carpet and Dr. Miles had a chance to interact with Miss DC. Um, So it was just a really, really nice experience, I think, for all. More importantly, I was glad that my daughters attended. Yes, we got to see more of the Miles clan up close in person. Absolutely. And, you know, we had the opportunity. It's always good when you have your siblings there and, you know, uh, they are ministers, as you know. But I was excited about them coming in. It was so many people there. And all the some of the who were some of all the dignitaries you was interviewing because oh my I gosh everybody dignitaries from the to, European Union uh, were absolutely. there and I thought it was honestly a great interview with them they talked about how strong the European Union is and it is and you know just being there for the African Union and wanting to see it continue to grow and so I thought that was just a phenomenal event but again this was a reception to welcome in the brand new ambassador the brand new permanent representative to the African Union mission to the USA. Uh, the Honorable, Her her Excellency, Hilda Suka Mufuze. I hope I said it right. Oh, I think I might have messed up the girl. last oh, name. You, you, you're, getting the, uh, you, you're getting the thing very fluent in uh, African <laughs> uh, language. I, and we I celebrated at Dr. Alawale's house in Upper Marlboro, Maryland. I'm not going to drop the address because, look, it was a nice house. Beautiful, and I thought it was so great he hosted it. Uh, Aisha Brave Boy for Prince George's County uh, was there, and just so many just great leaders um, and just important people in the community who really care about advancing our community. And I think to that, advancing our community, I also know you are working with Dr. Charles Alawali. He has the Pan Sun Group, right? The Pan African Group that he's working Absolutely. with, and I know you're on the board of that. So working with Dr. Alawali's group and all the work that you already have a, have going on with MFL Africa. Give us an update, Dr. Miles, and next steps on what we can expect from the great continent of Africa in partnership with the Minor Football League, who will be playing games next year in Africa. Absolutely. As you know, we are, when the next couple of months, we will be heading to Africa, you know. So I hope Yeah, you're a part of a great anything. delegation, uh, I know, absolutely. with some great people, like I know the team president for the Washington football team. Dr. Jason Wright is on. I shouldn't say Dr. Jason Wright. Mr. Jason Wright is on there. Um, And I know you just have so many others, right? Jamie Dukes, right? Who's a board member, I think, is on there as well. It's going to be a great group of y'all traveling to Africa. Sierra Leone, right? You guys are starting it. Uh, Absolutely. And don't forget uh, Mel Forbes, our chief strategist. Yes. Along with Joyce Harris. And, you know, we just want to make sure that uh, uh, things are in place because, as you stated earlier, we still in the pandemic thing, getting a little better, uh, not to where we would like it to be, but life goes on. So we have to really to be uh, very mindful of uh, this day and time. But, you know, more importantly, like I say, uh, players has been calling, you know, we're excited about the players that's calling, the players that really interested in what the MFL is about and looking forward to playing. So I'm excited about that. Yeah, like you said, and you've been just meeting with many, many guys who are coming here to get their workouts in, make sure their registration fee is paid. And to that point, again, there is still time to register for the 2022 minor football league season on our website, mflishere.com. All you have to do is hit players, hit football registration, fill out that form, and then be sure to lock in your spot by paying the player registration fee. It's all super easy. And we even made it easier to pay your fee. You can pay on PayPal. Cash App and Venmo. Again, super, and even Zelle. Very easy ways to make sure that you secure your spot to have a chance to make one of the MFL 16 teams here in Africa or 16 teams in America. So again, want to make sure that we hammer that point home. But lots happening with the continent of Africa. Hashtag MFL Africa on social media if you want to follow along. Because also somebody who was at the event, Dr. Remy Duyale. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, oh, you know, you can... Uh, you can really pronounce these names. Yeah, I really uh, hope I am, Dr. Miles. I got to make them proud. I uh, should put you on the spot, though, next time, Dr. Miles. Oh, uh, no, please don't do that. But <laughs> I have to say the great, outstanding job you did because so many people want to be interviewed by you, and you was interviewing people. I mean, I had to be... Uh, that had to be somewhat uh, hectic and, you know, crowded. I, it was, but job. I still think you were leading the security, giving people armbands. 
I don't think I saw you the entire night. You're just running around. I think the only time I saw you is when you popped up for pictures to take pictures and then you were gone. You're pretty quick, Dr. Miles. You're pretty quick coming well, in and out. You know, we wanted to make everybody feel comfortable. I also yeah. Want to- I'm and why don't you talk about that job. for our listening audience? What was the planning and preparation like putting together such a nice big event in the midst of a pandemic? Absolutely. You know, we did our, our due diligence in terms of making sure that we did met all the protocol with the, uh, COVID-19. You know, we did the we did the uh, COVID uh, test. We made sure we did, we did the, uh, the, uh, the temperature of reading. So, it, it was, you know, we follow all protocols that we possibly could have followed to make sure that this went off well. And, and uh, I have to admit, we almost had, what, for 300 people there. You yeah, know? it was very and nice was very and very well attended. And, yeah, beautiful setup. Beautiful, and, beautiful. And we definitely want to shout out to the neighbors that they were very, very uh, receptive and really uh, 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 nice about people could drive, park in their driveways and stuff. In spite of Dr. Alda Walling house, though, them big houses there, the neighbors was really, really nice. They were, and that's so needed, all right? It's so needed because it takes a village, it takes a community, and it's great to see that he has that support. And staying on MFL Africa, Dr. Miles, I know one of the questions that were asked a lot is about where you'll be placing these franchises in Africa. So I know you haven't put the, the final places yet, but why don't we give people an insight into the feasibility studies and just whatever else is in your head in terms of choosing a location, choosing multiple locations in Africa to house minor football league franchises? Absolutely. As you know, and we have to keep in mind, it's 50 countries over there, you know, 50 countries in that continent. Right. And some of them are blacklisted. So we have to be very careful in what the, uh, country we choose. But of course, G- uh, uh, Ghana, Afghanistan, uh, Af- you hear me say, Ghana, <laughs> Egypt, Nigeria. I mean, these are uh, uh, Sierra Leone. These are some of the countries that we're going to, excuse me, to put these franchises in. And like I say, you know, we still in the, uh, the process of feasibility study with other countries. And like I say, it sounds 16 sound like a lot, but when you talk about placing where you have 50 countries that, you know, some people are not going to get franchised, but we want to make it so that a couple of countries can share a franchise and meaning that they're playing both parts of the, the both, uh, uh, a country. So it, it, it's a process and, and, and it's and uh, you know we do not do diligence to make sure we do everything right as you should again. right it's new to us and and you know we're going over here I've never been to Africa I don't know about you I uh, haven't I yet it's be been careful. on the bucket list absolutely I want to be very mindful of what I eat over there you know me uh, still got to get used to the food uh, but uh, I'm definitely excited about going over there some of our delegation they're excited about going there too along with other people uh, in the business uh, sector here in America. So we, we're excited about it, the MFL spearheading things, and, and we like being in that position. Right. Being in that position is so important as a worldwide leader when it comes to sports. That's what the Minor Football League is, and giving people an opportunity and a chance. And as we talk about giving people an opportunity and giving people a chance, Dr. Miles, talk about some of the straight to- some of the traits and qualities you're looking for from young men who want a chance to say that I play in the minor football league. Well, we're talking about over in Africa, as you know, a lot of kids come here to these power five conference schools and play. They end up in the NFL, but then you have some that then for that opportunity to come here. So bringing them MFL there will give them an opportunity to play and still feel their dream. And remember that, we're not going to put in a Band-Aid on anything. We want to teach the young kids American football as right. well. So we're going to start them from a, a Pee Wee League all the way up. So it familiarize them and give them an understanding of teaching them the tools and techniques of playing in the minor football league. So in the football, in football as a whole, we want them to understand the logistics of it as well as uh, learning the tackle and, and the blocking and the, and the reading defense and reading offense. And so these are some things that we're looking forward to doing. So much you are looking forward to doing. Again, the minor football league providing an opportunity. And speaking of opportunity, as I understand it, we're welcoming on two new interns right to the minor football. League. Absolutely. And we're going to bring them on. You know, we, we, 
We're getting that paperwork together. We're excited. Uh, when graduate from Morgan State, so we're we're excited about about these uh, young people coming on. You know, we want to uh, uh, get their ideas and see what they uh, bring to the table. But more importantly, we want them to understand we're also excited about. You know, we want to get. I, I'm excited about this evening. Um, as you know, the governor going to be at the baseball yeah, game. Yeah, starting the out the Blueprint. first pitch. And I, why don't you touch why on that? Why didn't ask me to throw the first pitch? As a matter of fact, you know, I used to play baseball in my days, long, long, long time ago. But we don't want you to throw it out. We know you might throw it up. No, the you didn't. I used to throw a main baseball, not to forget mentioning a nice softball. But you know, and that's something I think is great. And to have somebody like Governor Larry Hogan at the event connecting with him and the community and the families. That's what it's all about. And this is what the minor football league enjoys being in in the midst of people. And that's why this partnership with the Southern Maryland blue crabs is so important. It's why you guys should all be at the game at two o'clock today. We're hoping you can join us as they take on the Lexington legends. But again, you look at the, the Southern Maryland blue crabs organization they are part of the minor league baseball program, right? Minor league baseball is something you always talk about that though, Dr. Miles. Football doesn't have that, right? You see it in baseball. We have the D, we have the D league now in basketball, but for football, it's pretty much you get a chance in college and then hopefully you go pro, right? There's like really no in between the people I've been able to kind of latch on to. And this is where the minor football league comes in and filling that void. Absolutely. And they can stay home and not have to head to Canada necessarily to play football. Absolutely. And that's why it's so important that that we uh, form this alliance and we put in a minor professional football team down there as well because they had their fans down there. And you don't have to travel way up here to Baltimore. To right. Washington, it's in your hometown. Because you will have your own uh, minor professional football team. And a lot of people are excited about that. And we're excited about that, too. So. You know, we're, we're talking, we're trying to put this together, but the MFL will be in Waldorf. And as you know, I have a son down here. So he was spearheaded this this uh, this uh, charge in terms of uh, handling the, the uh, franchise that we put down there. And we're going to give him a choice between the Raiders and we give him a choice between the Chargers. Also, we're also going over into Delaware right. as well. So, you know, we're excited. We want to bring... Uh, uh, professional football uh, to the areas where people don't have to necessarily necessarily feel like they out of uh, uh, touch with uh, some of the things they need because down in Waldorf is a beautiful area. Oh down my there. gosh, yes. The homes down there is beautiful. The Picturesque. Are real nice. Absolutely. Everybody is so nice down here, down there. So we're looking forward to going down there uh, this evening and, uh, you know, get this deal done. And as we talk about going down there, let's talk more about just how this relationship was genuinely created with the Southern Maryland Blue Crabs. And, you know, what made you say yes to it as a member of the Minor Football League? Absolutely. Well, as you know, we want to keep things geographically uh, 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 close. And after uh, talking to a lot of people, we did a feasibility study uh, year four last down there, but we didn't go with it because, as you know, a lot of things were put on hold because of COVID-19. So we just want to make sure that we really had everything in place before we had this conversation right. with them. But unknown uh, to us, they had already heard about us on the way there. Right. So that, that, you know, that, that conversation was, was really uh, uh, a great conversation, but not a conversation that they was mute about. They understood and they knew about the MFL. So, and uh, I always say, why invent the wheel? They have a great facility that hold five to 6,000 people. Right. And the great thing about it is, and you know the MFL want to be affordable entertainment, family entertainment, economic development. And with their, um, with their facility down there, I think it's a win-win fit for everybody down there. So, and the, Beautiful and the young facility. There, you haven't been out absolutely. there yet. Check it out. Regency Furniture Stadium. Absolutely. So you look at that and you say to yourself, you know, hey, this would be a perfect fit for the MFL. You have a lot of young guys come home from college. They're finished. They will still like to com- uh, continue their career in football. And what greater way, what better way to do it? than playing your own hometown where you don't have to go anywhere. There's no place like home. And like you said, the minor football league, 
bringing these teams to communities and hometowns across the entire country. This is why, Dr. Miles, I mean, let's go back to the beginning when you formulated the minor football league and made the dream the reality. Let's talk about the growth and progress that you've seen over half your life being spent here and to creating the minor football league. Yeah, and when you think about it, it's uh, we seem to have come a long way, but we still have yet to go yes, even further are. because it's yep. still a lot to be done uh, in, in putting the minor football league together. Because like I say, it's still some areas that we that we are studying in terms of putting uh, more uh, MFL franchises close. We we don't uh, we're gonna pull away from uh, New York because hey, uh, I just think we have too many areas down here that 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 we can fit franchises in and it'd be right. close. Because like I say, we want to cut down on the traveling and the costs and everything of the minor football league, but more importantly, you have communities that yes. need economic development, that, that growth, that stimulant, that shot in the arm. And the minor football league will give them that in terms of jobs where there are no jobs, right. in terms of, you know, you're looking for uh, apparel, you're looking for internship, Everything. you're looking for coaching opportunity, GM opportunity dance team opportunity and you know like i say i can't overstate that enough that is big time when you're talking about dance teams and that's something i wasn't yeah. aware of but like i say we have some great news we're going to be bringing everybody in the future because we'll have all these people on and, and we even got calls from the go-go and that's something right. uh the washington go-go and so they want to do stuff with your board anyway absolutely right? But the uh, uh, the uh, the Washington Go Go, you know, we had that conversation with them. They looking forward to having a meeting with us. So, it, it, you know, it just seemed like everything falling in place right now with the minor football league, and we always been one to support all the different leagues around in terms of um, the Go Go's. Then you have the uh, Maryland Blue Crabs. You know, uh, even the Washington team, the, the Wizards, the Mystics. Right. We want us to be a, 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 a supporter of all these different teams. So we're excited about that. That's what's important about the minor football league. <laughs> we're so excited about us pushing forward and the things that we're doing. And I want people to call in, you know, call you have an opportunity. Yes. You know, and the great thing about when they call in, they have a chance to sometimes talk to you, Dr. Miles. Oh, absolutely. I absolutely. mean, even though Dr. Miles is so busy with stuff, he truly enjoys just getting on the phone, answering your questions, talking to players and dance team members. I know you were talking to somebody who might be, as I understand it, one of our next dance team directors as well, right, in Texas. Absolutely. Uh, in Texas, uh, we, we have Yay. some people. Also, don't forget down in Tennessee, uh, we have some new gyms. We on we are interviewing a lot of people. But if you're interested and you know uh, the team where we have franchises at, we are interviewing head coaches in this air, in those yep, areas. The time is now. The, the time is now because we want to be a board. Last year, this year, we was ready. We was ready, but unfortunately. You know, things never work out the way you want them to because and it's right. unfortunate. But that don't make you stop. That makes you push forward with it. Yeah. And what that's do you what do in the, the face NFL of adversity? Do. Absolutely. You keep pushing forward. Mm -hmm. So we're excited about that. And like I say, we got people calling and we want to hear from you. We want right. people, if you're interested, that's what the Laboratory of Change is about. Giving people an opportunity to do the thing that you want to do in sports. If you're interested in sports management, this is where you want to be. Marketing, exactly. PR. Kinesiology. You know. I mean, so many different fields that are right here. And I think this is, this is again, why you join the Minor Football League, to finally have a chance to pursue that opportunity that so many of you asked for. Absolutely. And you ball players at these schools in the area, you know, give us a call. I mean, uh, right now we do try to attend all the different games. Uh, as you know, we would... We were at the Howard game Friday, you know, and the Howard and Morgan. So we trying to get all, not only those two, Catholic University, you know, Georgetown. We want these so young men right to understand that you're going to stay in the area and you want to continue your career. This is where you do it at. Give us a call. Uh, we there to interview you guys and talk to you. Even coaches, you got intern coaching position available. So we're excited about what the MFL is doing in terms of 
being the laboratory of change. Let's we break want that people down. to understand what is the laboratory of change. The laboratory of change meaning you we want to do things outside of the box. We want women GMs. We yes, want to give people an opportunity. Due, Absolutely. We want to give people the opportunity that they feel that the opportunity was not there for them. You know, all these opportunities is here now. All you have to do is reach out to us, you know, give us a call, you know, come experience what we're doing. Go to our website. Go to our social media platform. The MFL, we're constantly doing things. We're constantly thinking outside of the box. What That's what the Laboratory of Change is about. That's exactly what the Laboratory of Change is about. And as you said, go to our website, mflisher.com, also on social media. Check us out. Experience the MFL on Instagram and at MFL Experience on Twitter. I just want to make sure people are following along with us. Tweet at us. Hashtag on this show. You, If you like something you hear, hashtag inside the MFL. And of course, our hashtags throughout the year, hashtag MFL is here and hashtag MFL experience. But give us a chance to answer you and put a face to the voices that we're hearing on radio. But we appreciate your support so much. It means the world. We cannot have done anything without any of you all. Absolutely. Especially you groups in the uh, community groups and stuff. It, you know, we like last year, you your, took families to the um, to the go go games. We want to give people an opportunity to get a chance to go look at these other uh, 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 professional teams in the area. We have a way to make that possible. We want to do that. Also, you young people that need community service hours, right? We're Ooh, to perfect give you that. opportunity to do it's that. Perfect opportunities that uh, we want you to all call us. And as you know, I have to stick this in. We definitely getting ready for the Cardoza All Met Hall of Fame dinner, tenth annual Cardoza All Met Hall of Fame dinner. Yes, and they're so excited about that up. one, Doctor Miles, because I know COVID wouldn't let you be great last year. Absolutely, for the last couple of years we couldn't be great. Yeah, but now we're going to be great, and we we recognize a lot of people in the community, especially people that went to Cardoza High School. And if you're doing something in the community, believe us, we know about it, and we're going to recognize you people you individuals for the, uh, the good job you're doing in the community. I know a lot of guys all the time I talk to, they're doing some fantastic stuff in the community. And, and that's I what it's about, you know. It's not Absolutely. just going into a community and taking the resources. How are you planting the seed and helping this to grow within the community? Like you said, how are you helping the, their children's children or anybody learn Absolutely. the business? And really learn that business development so, so early. And speaking of which, we're also looking for business interns for the minor football league. We're always with the flagging because we're always working together instead and you, of working harder. That's what you do. You're always looking forward. We're always looking forward to help different groups in the community. And right now, you know, it's early in the morning, but we get up, we push forward and everything. Always. And Just like a football game. You always have to keep going. And we're still on the go because like you said, right after this, we're going to be going to the baseball game. Absolutely. And looking forward to that. And I think, you know, something I think that's so special and unique is, you know, I, I really enjoy the minor league games. And I grew up kind of going to minor leagues games because I would go to the Frederick Keys games with many of my daycares growing up. But it's just that community feel that's there. And I think that's what I get at minor football league games. That community feel and people that truly care about the team, want to see them do the best and just really know it's great family entertainment. Absolutely. And I also want to say, please, the watch, the MFL is not playing the game down in there, the key. Oh, we yeah. got too many people calling and say, what time is the game? No, we're invited down there for a feasibility study and we're invited to the game down there. So, that don't mean that right. we're playing. So Two we want to clarify things. We're doing that. the feasibility we're, study in, study, and then we'll also be at the game supporting the two teams that are playing. Absolutely. Now, I can't control if Dr. Miles goes out there and thinks he's still got it and tries to throw a pitch. Believe but me. But other than I, that. I won't, you know, <laughs> but, uh, you know, and and I appreciate everybody because they call and everybody getting excited. No, we're not playing. We're going down there and support the, uh, you know, the, uh, the Maryland Blue Crabs organization. And we're going to have a conversation with them. And, and the great thing about it, we're there to support them. So people always been, people been calling the office asking, uh, uh, what time is the game? Y'all playing? No, we're not playing. We're going down there and watch <laughs> baseball. That's right. what we're going to do. So we're excited about that. And we want to say uh, uh, good luck to the Washington team. Congratulate them for their win against Atlanta because yes, they had what a great victory Monday we had in DC. Absolutely. Week. Everybody was excited. 
Because you know how it get when Washington Oh, my loses. gosh. Like the fans, yes. We're heartbroken. We take it personal. We really do here in Washington. And talking about taking it personal, be sure to personally follow us on social media at Experience the MFL on Instagram, at MFL Experience on Twitter. Also check us out on LinkedIn at Minor Football League. Minor Football League on LinkedIn. Dr. Miles is always finding a way to make everybody here smile and laugh. But also our website, MFL is here.com. Again, players, all you have to go to is hit our registration tab to register for the 2022 season, as well as dancers. Go to our website and register to secure your spot for a chance to try out for the minor football league. We appreciate y'all support. And as always, keep inside the what, Dr. Miles? Inside the MFL. The MFL. Bye, guys. You've been listening to Inside the MFL, the official sports talk radio show of the Minor Football League with your hosts, Dr. Richard Miles Sr. and Kelsey Nicole Nelson. For more information, visit MFLisHere.com or the MFL page under programs at DCRadio.gov. Experience the MFL. How can we experience the MFL? The Minor Football League. Here's information on how you can experience the MFL. The Minor Football League was established in 1993 by founder and CEO Dr. Richard D. Miles Sr., a league created for the people and by the people. To learn more on how you can experience the MFL with the MFL team in your area, visit experiencethemfl.com or go to The MFL is Here. The MFL, the laboratory of change. Copyright MFL. No portion of this audio may be reproduced or re-recorded without the written permission from the Minor Football League. Visit experiencethemfl.com. This is a Mad Voice production.